So somewhere rather than me owning my own Maruti 800, probably it renting a Ferrari and driving it to show my entire capability through a bigger machine. And I think at some stage he executed. Because when you want to give up business and go back into a career path, it's a huge ego war that you have to go through. Will the world see me as a failure? Hey, it doesn't matter how the world sees you. What matters is how you see yourself. The world has free time. It will see everybody the way they want to see and judge everybody the way they want to judge. It's a decision that you will have to execute. I'm sure Ramji went through that same war. If I say I want to go back to Rajan, what would everybody say? But eventually it's not the question of everybody. That everybody is never there when you laugh. That everybody is never there to wipe her tears. That everybody is not there when you contemplate your choices in the silent chambers of your own heart. That everybody does not exist. It's you and your life. Those opinions don't matter because they are chuma opinions, empty opinions. Finally, it's your life. You should be able to do what gives you happiness. You should be able to do what gives you completeness. You should be able to do what gives you fulfillment. You should do what you feel challenged by. You should do where you can blossom and feel complete about it. And it's not that from business, it straight away became Microsoft. They were decisions, they were paths, they were changes and eventually grew into what he refers to himself as a big match player. So it's very very important. You have nothing to prove. If in your mind you feel there are alternative paths by which you believe you can succeed. If there is an alternative by which you think you can do a lot more with your potential than what you are doing. Maybe from one line of business to another line of business itself. I think I have done this line of business long enough. And I think this is how much it is. I think there is an alternative line where I can say I can blossom. There is no shame in executing those choices. There is a time that you have to guts it out. You have to take some big decisions. In the context of your future, it's an important decision. So, so what if it's a difficult decision? So executed this choice one day saying that rather than feeling underutilized with limited resources and calling it my own organization, I think let me join a big infrastructure where the constraint of resources is not something I have to fight with. Utilization of resources becomes my challenge. Leading the resources becomes my challenge. Doing justice to the resources becomes my challenge. And thereby let me justify what I am capable of was a big counter choice executed. And the result in effect is that moment today. So the learning for all of us is never get struck with consequences. And that's very insulting to a human being. Very insulting. If a dog has been caged, it will remain caged for the rest of its life. If man has been caged, he has to think how to escape the cage. If the dog has been tied, and it is tied for the rest of its life. The horse has been bought by this person for the rest of his life. That horse will remain enslaved to him till it finds the axe. But we are humans. We don't have to be enslaved by anything. We don't have to get stuck up by anything. There is no final consequence in our life. There is always another choice and that's your move. He doesn't make the final move. He makes one final move. He says enough, come. All other moves is only one more move. And after that is your move. No matter what circumstance and situation you find yourself, the next is your move. And it's out of executing those counter choices. You create those moments in your life. Vivardhan. Mommy. Daddy, Rajan, my wife, my son, rest of you. Mata, Pita, Guru, Daivan, that template I took control this. My name is Vivardhan. I just want to share my experience. Um, my mother went uh, 
I'm sorry, I don't like, I cannot talk like Kola or Rajan. I have my own uh, flavor. Uh, he told about Microsoft for 10-15 seconds. Just I don't know who don't know about Microsoft. <laughs> my mother uh, went missing on uh, Thursday morning. She went to a temple and uh, she did come back. And uh, we all don't know what to do. I, I came to know about that only at 12 o'clock. 12 to 2... I was searching, searching, searching everywhere, same street, same horses, everything was getting repeated, and no news, nothing, nobody knows. Um, two o'clock, it was you know, two hours up, I went to a police station and gave a complaint. And they didn't care about it, no response. <clears throat> I am not a VAP, I am not a superstar. Anyways, so we started searching, 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 people told to go and look in the hospitals, I looked in GH, Roya Peta. She is fine now, she is with me. I went to GH, Roya Peta, all the government hospitals, one hospital, mortuary also, I checked. She was not there. Searching, 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 she was not there. I was thinking only Rajan, but I don't want to go, go to Rajan for wrong reason. I want to meet Rajan only for good reason. But I was praying. Searching, 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 mother was not there. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, mother was not there. All relatives came home, they started supporting, mother was not there. Next day morning, 4.30, we woke up, searching, 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 no, she was not there. Searched in dustbins, uh, she was not there. Everybody, you know, like, uh, everybody told she'll come back, she'll come back, she'll come back. Only police not responded. I went and met Rajan. Rajan told she'll come back. He hugged me. He told me to do meditation. That's all. Then we started searching, searching, searching. 4.35, uh, she just walked in. Rajan told she'll come back. I want to tell Rajan, Sirchikte varanga paranga Rajan. Engyo poerikaranga. Police case put up, they told a missing woman. What do you mean by missing woman? Yeah? She's not there, that's all. Not missing woman, she is hiding somewhere, that's all. Sorry, 4.30 she came back. She came back, uh, what any other moment we need. My mother is with me, everything is fine now. Thank you so much, Rajan, thank you all. Love you so much. Come, Nagendran, come. I thought it was Raghupati. Raghupati is left hand. Just to create a context, some learning, even from this mastermind, it's okay. After Nagendran, I want somebody from the new batch to go through this first time experience. So then we know that you have joined the entire flow. So after Nagendra, I'm going to look for some hand from the new batch. Happy morning. <coughs> I committed Rajan, like, I'll get a uh, check from Rajan, come to stage. To stage.
I got 85 in maths out of 200. And it was not eligible for my engineering. I already got a Hindustan college admission for 500 rupees. Everything was booked, but it was not eligible. Tough time. That entire tour, you should know how it was, and my dad was with me, the entire family was there. <laughs> and my dad didn't tell me Ennaval Patiklam because. No, no, I'm not putting down my dad. My dad's way of treating me is different. He knows how to teach me. So, in Guna Caves. <laughs> Guna Caves. Guna Caves. The second turning point in my life. I will see my life as before Alma Mater and Alpha Alma Mater. Thank you, Rajan. We'll take some questions. <laughs> Why should we not cut our hair and nails on Tuesday? Does this have an impact on us? When we were children, we should not cut our hair on Tuesday because normally saloons are closed on Tuesday. <laughs> they didn't want us to cut it ourselves, it won't come properly. See, how to teach you discipline? Whenever you want, you can eat. Whenever you want, you can sleep. Whenever you want, you can excrete. Whenever you want, you can call your woman and go, I am. Suppose we live like that. There will be no difference between animals and a human being. And human being become, being a thinking animal, he is a very dangerous animal. So some disciplining had to be done. So to teach you discipline, certain slots have to be created. These are good days. These are bad days. This is auspicious time. This is Ravagalam. This can only be started on Amavasa. This should not be started on Amavasa. This period alone, like his father told him, some rest is required. So woman needs some freedom. So they said, Adi Masa, you should not have sex. Somewhere at least one month they can feel Abba. <laughs> okay, I don't have to bear the weight on me. Though the actual thing is that woman who become pregnant in Adi Masam, the child will be born in May. And May is supposed to be the hottest month. It may be difficult for a child at a time when air conditioning was not there for a child to grow. So in case you can skip your that in Adi Masam, then you skip the child being born in the month of May. The child does not have to. Though I don't want to speak much about it because I am born in May. So I know... <laughs> Somewhere, against all the customs that were prevailing, my father managed to sneak with my mother. Okay. <laughs> so some discipline has to be brought in. Otherwise you will never be disciplined. All the time you keep cutting nails there, all the time you keep... There will be no structure to life. So somewhere in order to bring structure to life, certain things have been brought in. If you don't do it in this period, if you do it in that period, 
certain astronomical factors are added into the whole thing. For example, from the new moon day to the next few days. In fact, you can see the shift in the tides. In fact, fish lay their eggs to a very large extent and their young ones come out to a very large extent around those tides which are governed by the new moon. So there are a lot of factors was factored in basically to cause a sense of discipline into your life. What today in modern day parlance we would say a time for everything and everything in its time. Everything cannot be done in all the time. A space for everything, everything in its space. Today you sit in the cot and have your dinner. Somewhere something will spill over there. On that only you will sleep. And that fermented food is going to invite a lot of bacteria and virus. You don't wash your legs. You just go and lie down in the bed the way you wash. And we walk everywhere with barefoot. So somewhere the entire possibilities of germs from those legs is going to be there on the bed. So if half the time many of you keep finding <laughs> because you are living all the time in a contaminated environment. There is no cleanliness there either with your hands before you eat nor with your legs which never gets washed other than when you take bath. And yet it's not that all our house is such that where if we put the hand on the floor and take there will be no dirt. So there is dirt. On that itself you will lie down. On that itself you will put your leg and climb on the cot and lie down there. So you are living in environments which are full of microorganisms and that is what you are inhaling all the time, that is what you are exhaling all the time. So somewhere most of you do not have the habit of brushing your teeth the second time when air conditioning is on and somewhere if the filters have not been cleaned then the air has not been conditioned. If only room is cool that's called air cooler. Only when the air is conditioned, then it's an air conditioner, which means somewhere if the, that's why when you open the filter in an air conditioner, you'll find it's full of dust. And many of your air conditioners, the air filters are never cleaned. Years together, it'll continue to be there because for you, till it goes wrong, you don't think you have to call a mechanic. And some of these air conditioning companies, they all have oversold so much, they cannot service all the existing air conditioners, so they don't service it also. So the air in the room is not good. Now what happens when the air in the, when windows are open and there is circulation of air, it's okay. We live in air conditioned environment where there is no circulation of air. And this air conditioner is not keeping the room, the air clean. So what happens when the air is not conditioned there, everything has to get conditioned here. Your nasal hair cannot filter the entire air which is not properly conditioned. So the natural resultant of anybody in modern lifestyle is living in air conditioning rooms, somewhere after you go to sleep, your mouth will open. Because for the air to go inside through your mouth and come out, that filtering system is not there. The movement becomes much easier. But what we don't realize is you are taking in unconditioned air which is coming out, which creates the entire congestion in your lungs which you go through all this. But added to that, through this air, a lot of the microorganisms keeps depositing entire entire jaw region, which is why when some of you talk, saintly tolerance have to be developed. Gapuna. <laughs> Sometimes if you get stuck up inside a car with somebody who doesn't brush your teeth properly, now it doesn't matter how much you brush your teeth in the morning, if you don't brush your teeth in the night and if you are living in air conditioned rooms where the air filters are not cleaned, I think you are causing enough diseases for yourself and very bad breath is going to develop. So some discipline has to be developed. In the So morning routines, evening routines, afternoon routines, Tuesday routines, Monday routines, Sunday routines, after having bath only you should eat. Because somebody like you who doesn't by discipline maintain cleanliness, at least creating a context, have bath before you eat, wash your hands before you eat, wash your legs before you enter inside, certain things and somehow given with a religious connotation to you, at least on the context of that religious connotation. So before you sit to eat, you don't have to be a Christian to understand that. Lord, thank you for giving us our daily bread. To teach you gratitude. The other day I was telling the people in the organization, 
If all the 17 years, instead of teaching people, when they come to hug me, to whisper, love you so much, Rajan, if all the 17 years I have probably taught people to tell me when they come to hug me, thank you so much, Rajan, thank you so much, Alma Mater, maybe they would have held on and grown a lot more. Probably they were not taught to be grateful to what they have. They were not taught to be grateful to what they have received. Maybe in being grateful to what they have received, they would have understood the value of what they are receiving. Probably that would have helped them a lot. I went to the second step which is love. Without teaching them the first step, I should have probably taught all of them, thank you so much. And that would have made all the difference than teaching them, love you so much. And that would have made all the difference. So when you sit in the bread, that's a context by which before you have that you are saying, thank you so much for the food that is in front of me. Not everybody gets it, every meal. So everything that we consider as ritualistic, had to be caused by certain thinkers whom we call as religious reformers. The context being, use that big word discipline which we have an enormous resistance to. But think about it. A bullet train disciplined by those two railway tracks running within that is of use to everybody. When it loses out on the discipline of those tracks, it still has a lot of freedom, but that freedom is very destructive. The river disciplined by the banks continues to flow. It helps irrigation and the need for water. Everybody benefits, but when it gets beyond the discipline of the banks, now it's free. It's called floods. It destroys everything. When the waves of the sea stays within the seashore, disciplined by the seashore, it's the greatest delight to watch. When it was no more disciplined by the shore, it becomes a tsunami. It is destructive. The kite flying somewhere up there in the skies, disciplined by the thread that you hold at the other end, completely in your control. There is a meaning to that freedom. There is a joy to that freedom. The moment the thread is snapped, now it has undisciplined freedom, but it has no meaning to anybody. Freedom has meaning only in the context of discipline. It has no meaning when it doesn't have the context of discipline. Take a police dog that has been completely disciplined. You can remove the sling and let it free. It will not abuse that freedom. It knows what to do with that freedom. Take an untrained dog which has never been disciplined. Remove the sling and give it that freedom. It will link every piece of shit that it sees on the road. Discipline is the context in which freedom can be enjoyed. Responsible freedom is only possible for those who know what is discipline. And to cause that discipline within you, which we resist, which shouldn't be, simply put, a place for everything, everything in its place. A time for everything, everything in its time. That's what discipline is all about. And to bring this context to you, they said what should be in the kitchen should only be in the kitchen. To sleep you go to the bedroom. Today bedroom has become a multi-utility place and you are suffering from insomnia. You are not able to sleep. It takes me three hours to sleep. See what happens is the human nervous system has to know when I sit here, I will be fed. When I stand here, I will pray. When I lie down here, I am supposed to sleep. When I sit there, I am going to study. When you study in a dining table, you eat in your study table, you watch television on the bed, and somewhere you pray from your living room, you are creating a lot of mixed... New and this is science, we are not discussing opinions. Neuro-linguistic programming... So what you are doing is within you, you are creating a lot of mixed associations. Your body does not know now when it has to respond how. See, when there is one place where you sit and eat and you always sit in that place and eat, slowly over a period of time, your neuro-linguistic programming will be such that the moment you go to that place to sit, the moment you sit there, the body will start secreting its digestive juices. You will start salivating. The system is getting ready for digestion. The moment you go and sit in that place, your entire system is now transformed 
for it to absorb what you learn it knows you are going to study the moment you go in there you get introverted something about you is ready to meditate it's ready to close the eyes it's ready to connect into the within the scientist knows when he goes and sits there that is going to be there in the correct leadership is leadership in a juice shop also can be discussed in a tea shop also can be discussed but some of sit in the chairman's chair and take the board meeting now how you speak they are all programmed to listen to you different same instruction in a different environment they may not be so observant of the same thing they may not be does it make a difference it makes a difference enormous amount of difference the system is programmed like this so what happens is when i do nothing else but sleep on the bed do i know the con- convenient and the advantage of having a back rest resting a few pillows lying down there watching tv as long as you want to watch with a remote control in the hand switch off and go off to sleep but over a period of time your body gets conditioned now from the time you go to bed for another two and a half hours you can't sleep and this is neuro linguistic programming i take about 15 seconds to sleep because in that position my body has not been programmed to do anything else but sleep so the moment i go into it it understands i must sleep so to create this transformation within you a place for everything everything in its place a time for everything everything in its time they caused a lot of rituals which by itself doesn't have an absolute meaning but it's the context in which you can be transformed into a meaningful life and those are the contexts that keeps transforming you so even as an organization intray is intray outray is outray even in the context of an organization what is pending you should know where it is what has to be acted upon you should know where it is you should be able to close your eyes and take a pencil your system should know now you are going to exercise then the sort of hormones it generates then the sort of internal changes it goes through because it knows you are going to exercise right now according to it it's eating time right now and today you have come to pray and you find today i could not somehow feel the same devotion i could not concentrate on my meditation no the system was not programmed for it it thinks it's sleeping time but you are eating it thinks it's eating time you are praying it thinks it's praying time you are trying to study today i don't know i have studied for 4 hours but you didn't study in the 4 hours where your system has been programmed for studies and this is neuro linguistic program your body your system your central nervous system is continuously causing certain neuro associations to the whole thing that is why religion gave you some ritual before you did something saaparathukku munadi aachana mannungo that's nonsense that's absolute nonsense make that as a ritual now in future when you come to the mastermind before you step inside this door it should become automatically a ritual for you to check whether your mobile is on or off switch it off and come and i don't want the silent mode switch it off and come so they created certain rituals before you go out there was a ritual when you go to a house when you want to leave kungumam kudungo there was a ritual before you left a wedding tambulu petlava kudungo there was a ritual there was a mantra for this you house warming there was a ritual for that sending the child to school there was a ritual for that every day before you eat there was a ritual for that before you start cooking there was a ritual for that after you cook there was a ritual for that and the context of all the rituals that were created was basically to transform you to understand that by doing something you are triggering certain neuro associations within you for the system to understand oh now he is going to eat so all the internal changes that is required to create the context of your eating begins and now he is going to pray now he is going to read now he is going to go out now he is going to count cash a place for everything everything in its place a time for everything everything in its time and with that one discipline almost everything about our life can change evening i have a program in hyderabad where is this thing called love 
and I'll come back to see you in the next mastermind. I love you so much. Thank you.